The media and Democrats are in full blown panic mode. They're saying that as soon as the GOP wins in the midterms, they're going to impeach Joe Biden. Reminds me of back in 2018 when Donald Trump was campaigning for many Republicans. And he said, if the Democrats win, they will impeach me. And they did. They went on to impeach Trump twice, which is just silly, but he wasn't wrong. Now we have, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. We've got four. I got four articles pulled up right now where the media is like, they're going to impeach Joe Biden. If they win, they'll impeach him. Yeah, you know what? I hope they do. And the media is not completely wrong, but these Democrat activists are losing their minds at the idea that Joe Biden would be held accountable for being a crooked, corrupt individual. Now, Republicans are looking at the border, sending money to Ukraine and things like that as to why they may actually impeach him. Because impeachment has to be related to something they did as president. I would simply look back at Joe Biden as vice president talking about engaging in a quid pro quo with Ukraine, quid pro quo with Ukraine. There, I got it. And uh, then I would uh, take a look at what's going on now with Biden advocating for the sending of billions of dollars to Ukraine. And I have to wonder, is this Joe Biden paying them back or in some way engaging in his nefarious dealings? You have to wonder why it is the U.S. so heavily invested in Ukraine. Serious question. For what purpose is the U.S. and NATO involved in Ukraine? They're not a NATO nation. They're not an ally. We like them. We're negotiating with them. But I wonder if a large component of this is that Joe Biden was doing illicit business dealings. He is on camera admitting to this. So this is the next step. And I got to say, boy, if this is true, what the media is saying is a major, major campaign for the Republicans. Joe Biden's approval rating may have gone up recently. And hey, with all due respect, that's that's fair. In aggregate, Joe Biden's approval rating has now climbed up to around 40 or so percent. OK, that means the majority of this country would prefer not to have Joe Biden. What's funny is you go to 100 people and you say if they win, they're going to impeach him. When 60 of those people don't like him, you're basically advocating for voting for the Republicans. I find it hilarious that at a time of record gas prices, a downturning economy, energy costs soaring, jobs being lost, Joe Biden coming out desperately waving his arms in the air and saying, you know, I'm doing a good job. It's, it's a good economy. It's a good economy. That they would come out and be like, if you vote for the Republicans, they'll impeach the guy that you don't like. Yeah, OK. Trump's overperforming in the polls. We talked about this the other day. Among independent voters, they favor Donald Trump. So if you're going to come out and say we can remove Joe Biden, you know, I start to think about it. Maybe it's exactly what the Democratic establishment wants. Now, if they impeach Joe Biden, are they going to be able to impeach Kamala Harris? I don't know. But hey, here's one way to get rid of a dude who seems to be completely out of it. A lot of people speculated that Joe Biden was just too old and he wouldn't make it health wise. He'd either have to step down or some tragedy would unfold. Perhaps there is another message. And that other message is that Republicans will impeach and convict. Maybe, maybe the impeachment is over his cognitive abilities. And thus, you will see many Democrats actually say to their constituents, you don't like Joe Biden. Kamala Harris will do a better job. She is younger and more with it. So maybe. I don't know for sure. But my friends, let's read this story, starting with the Washington Post that says if Republicans take the House, they're going to impeach Joe Biden. We have a bunch of other stories, too. Don't don't forget. The Hill definitively states House conservatives prep plans to impeach Biden. Yeah, they've been working on this for some time. But before we get started, my friends, I need your support. Over the Daily Beast, they wrote this article. All is not what it seems, especially when it comes to Tim Pool. Host Will Summer and Andrew Kirill discuss his new song which they think he's using to lure people into his right wing world. My friends, help me lure people into my right wing world by clicking the link in the description below and purchasing the song Only Ever Wanted. I love it. 69 cents on Bandcamp. The song is completely apolitical. It's just like a love and pain song. It's rock and it's it's like the 12th song I've ever released in my life. Will of the People, I released two years ago. People say they like that one better. Maybe you'll like this one. But it's funny that they're only now realizing it. Why? It's afraid. They realize that culture is influence. 
and that when Natalie Portman and other celebrities can come out using their cultural influence to direct people politically, that gives them power. So when I make a song that is apolitical, they go, oh, no, he's trying to lure people into his right wing world. My friends, please, if you would like to support my efforts in luring people into my right wing world, click the link in the description below. Buy this song. I love that in the article they write, he was number two only behind Elton John and Britney Spears. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's afraid. But anyway, link in the description below. Let's read the first story from uh, the Washington Post. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends. The Post opinion section uh, uh, published this story saying, Republicans are already planning investigations to embarrass the president if they win control of the House. Though they have yet to decide whether to impanel a permanent select committee on Hunter Biden or merely spread a dozen Hunter Biden investigations among existing committees. For a moment there, you weren't sure if I was joking, were you? The truth is that there will indeed be Hunter Biden investigations if the GOP takes over. Since what to do about the president's pitiable son is clearly the most pressing challenge America faces. Only the permanent select committee idea is fanciful. I'd like to just pause for a moment and say the evidence that we have attained from the laptop shows that Joe Biden may be involved in illicit business dealings with his son. And uh, Joe Biden is on camera saying of Ukraine that he went to the president and said that he would withhold a billion dollar loan guarantee in violation of U.S. law unless they fired a prosecutor. Just so happens that prosecutor was investigating Burisma, particularly uh, specifically a man named Mykola Zlachevsky was under investigation by the prosecutor, Victor Shokin, and Hunter Biden was on the board of the company founded by Mykola Zlachevsky. Just a coincidence, I suppose, that Joe Biden came in and said, fire him. And the new guy came in and uh, did not pursue charges. Huh. It's weird how that works. Hmm. Must be a big old coincidence. But you know what? Either way, there's probable cause. Would love to see an investigation into what Hunter Biden was doing in Ukraine, considering he doesn't speak Ukrainian, nor does he have any experience with energy companies. Yeah, the reality is it would seem, in my opinion, Hunter Biden is the proxy for Joe. He can take in the money as Joe's son and they share a bank account. At least that's what they learned from the laptop. So it's been reported. Let's get that investigation. For a moment there, you weren't sure if I was joking, he says. The Wall Street Journal reports that Rep. James Comer, who would lead the Oversight and Reform Committee in a GOP House, says Hunter Biden would be one of his top targets. Rep. Jim Jordan, a Fox News personality with a side gig as a member of Congress, will be spearheading the effort. I just want to pause and say, ah, you love the Republicans going after Hunter Biden. Can I just pause for a minute and say you should be investigating Joe Biden? Hunter Biden is part of it. His laptop is part of it, but Joe is the person who needs to be investigated. They're going to say, but Hunter probes along with the desk pounding hearings and other alleged Biden administration misdeeds designed to generate sound bites to be replayed nightly on Fox will not satisfy the constituency of a GOP majority, which is why pressure, it, uh, which is why pressure will immediately begin building to impeach President Biden. For what you ask? For whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is that is the cycle Republicans will be locked into in which they both create and respond to the base's demand for more competitiveness, more scandal, and ultimately a way to strike a fatal blow. The president they loathe. I don't hate Joe Biden. I mean, I despise him for sniffing children. I think he's gross and an awful person. I don't hate him for personal reasons. Well, I, actually, I guess that's a personal reason, right? Okay, well, anyway, my point is I don't just blindly hate Biden. I mostly don't care. I am concerned that there is evidence of malfeasance. There's an article called Biden Inc. published by Politico magazine that says, strangely, the fortunes of the Biden family track perfectly alongside his career. Perhaps we should investigate why it is that Joe Biden's brother gets lucrative contracts in Iraq when Joe Biden was put in charge of Iraq by Barack Obama. Questions. Hmm. We should probably ask why Joe Biden flew Hunter Biden Air Force Two to China to negotiate a private equity deal. Perhaps we should ask questions about Joe Biden admitting to engaging in a quid pro quo with Ukraine and then now as president sending them millions, millions of dollars. Questions. But for what you ask the Washington Post? For what? For those reasons I have just laid out. He says the loopier House Republicans are already preparing to impeach Biden as the Hill reports. No fewer than eight impeachment resolutions have been introduced in this Congress by the likes of Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene with control of the House. That desire will likely build and expand to the point where the party leadership could find it impossible to resist. 
If you remember the 1998 impeachment of Bill Clinton, this sounds awfully familiar. The fact that impeachment was a political disaster for Republicans will do little to restrain them from doing it all over again. Was it not a political disaster for the Democrats to impeach Trump? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the spattering of news articles all saying the same thing. The New York intelligence intelligencer says impeaching Biden will be job one if Republicans win the House. Sky News says weak and incompetent Republicans fixing to impeach Joe Biden post midterms. Boy, this is certainly a major right wing campaign to convince me to vote for the Republicans because I would love to see crooked Joe get impeached. Here's the official reporting from The Hill. House conservatives prep plans to impeach Joe Biden. Now, at first, I'll level with you guys. I didn't like the title that the the Democrats are panicking over this. Uh, You know, and I was like, it's straightforward. The Republicans are planning to impeach Joe Biden if they win. And then as I'm doing research, basically every single major outlet is like ready to flip the table, screaming and making up reasons why it's BS that Joe Biden would impeach. You know, they really are worried about it. Amazing. At first, I was like, they're just going to repeat the reporting from the Hill. We know Republicans want to do this. But then they, they, they desperately try to justify why it's wrong. There's no real reason to impeach Joe Biden. Listen, heed my words. And then I'm like, man, they're freaking out, huh? You know, every article I see where they freak out, I'm kind of like, maybe I should vote Republican. Well, I wouldn't vote Democrat, that's for sure. I would like to see some Mises Caucus guys win, get some libertarians in Congress, mind you. But, you know, we'll see. The Hill reports. Republicans hoping to seize control of the House in November are already setting their sights on what is, for many of them, a top priority next year, impeaching President Biden. A number of rank and file conservatives have already introduced impeachment articles in the current Congress against the president. They accuse Biden of committing high crimes in his approach to a range of issues touching on border enforcement, the coronavirus pandemic, and the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't forget that. The surrender of Afghanistan. Absolutely. Those resolutions never had a chance of seeing the light of day, with Democrats holding a narrow control of of the lower chamber. But with Republicans widely expected to win, where did we, they just jump me? Uh, Republicans widely expected to win the House majority in the midterms. Many of those same conservatives want to tap their new potential powers to oust a president they deem unfit. Some would like to make it a first order of business. Quote, I have consistently said President Biden should be impeached for intentionally opening our border and making Americans less safe said Rep. Bob Good. Congress has a duty to hold the president accountable for this and any other failures of his constitutional responsibilities. So a new Republican majority must be prepared to aggressively conduct oversight on day one. Okay, well, if you want to get a conviction, then you're going to need 60 senators. I don't even think that's possible because not enough senators are actually uh, up for re-election. In fact, I think Republicans are at a disadvantage in that regard. However, if they get the House they can pass articles of impeachment, which will go to the Senate. Joe Biden will have been impeached. And then the Senate will say, now we ain't convicting. But either way, Joe Biden may end up getting impeached more times than Trump was. No joke, because they can just keep passing these bills if they want. Not that they'll go anywhere. The conservative impeachment drive is reminiscent of that orchestrated by liberals four years ago. As Democrats took control of the House in 2019 under then President Trump, At the time, a small handful of vocal progressives wanted to impeach Trump, largely over accusations that he'd obstructed a Justice Department probe into Russian ties to his 2016 campaign. The idea was repeatedly rejected by Speaker Nancy Pelosi, not least out of fear that it would alienate voters in tough battleground districts. The tide turned when a whistleblower accused Trump of pressuring a foreign power to find dirt on his political opponent. A lie. You see how they're gaslighting you? I take you back in time. They say the tide turned when a whistleblower accused Trump of pressuring a foreign power to find dirt on his political opponent. Joe Biden at the time was not running for office. Nobody was entertaining the idea that he run for office. It was only after a video was published showing Joe Biden engage in a quid pro quo with Ukraine that Donald Trump said, you know, what's up with that? Tell me what you find with what with what with uh, what happened there. And then they went, he's going after his political rival. And everyone everyone was like, Joe Biden. You think Joe Biden's going to run for office? The dude's like 80. Then he did. And now they're gaslighting, trying to make you think that what Trump did was in response to Biden running for president. But he was not running. He had not announced. No one was entertaining the thought. Trump went after the corruption. I wonder if the reason Joe Biden ran 
was because they needed a corporeal form. That's how they described. I think New York Mag said this. They said, we need your corporeal form, Biden, to win. They wanted to anti-elect Trump. They needed anybody who could run so that they would get Donald Trump. So they would get people to vote against Donald Trump. Joe Biden also, as a bonus, then could claim that Trump was trying to dig up dirt on him. Creepy. With moderates on board, Pelosi launched a formal impeachment inquiry in September 2019, eight months after taking the speaker's gavel. Three months later, the House impeached Trump on two counts related to abusing power. And what did they see? Jeff Van Drew quit the Democratic Party and became a Republican and then won his primary as a Republican in a landslide. That shows that moderates were unhappy. You see, Pelosi promised and the moderates promised if you voted for them in these 31 Trump districts, they would stop the culture war. They would focus on kitchen table issues, insurance, jobs, the economy. And then as soon as they got in, what did they do? They bent their knee to Nancy Pelosi and said, yes, we will impeach Trump. What a kick in the balls to anybody who thought they would actually get helped by these people. And they learned their lesson. A major swing in favor of the Republicans in 2020. Not enough, not enough to win back the House or the Senate. In my opinion, they could have taken the Senate, but Donald Trump was obsessed with with his fraud narrative. And then we actually had videos of people saying they wouldn't vote because of it. I got to tell you right now, my friends, if you want Joe Biden to be impeached, and I do, you have to go vote. Put a thumbtack in any other issues. Get your friends. Go door to door. Register voters right now. Every single person should go talk to your two immediate neighbors and say, just want to make sure you guys registered to vote because the election's coming up soon. That's it. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But people who register to vote typically vote in their first year, in their first election. This is what we need to do. If you're concerned about malfeasance in any capacity, be it Joe Biden's or, or anywhere else, anywhere else, you got to win and get the Republican subpoena power. Now, primaries matter. And we've seen a lot of great people win in their primaries. So things are looking good. Next step, win in the House. Democrats are gaining in the polls. Pay attention. They're going to say at least eight resolutions to impeach Biden have been offered since he took office. Three related to his handling of the migrant surge. Three targeting his management of U.S. withdrawal of Afghanistan. Of Afghanistan. One denouncing the eviction moratorium designed to help renters during the pandemic. And still another connected to the overseas business dealings of his son, Hunter Biden. I'd like to point out, that the eviction moratorium may have actually violated the Third Amendment. I know, it's funny, right? Everyone's like, the Third Amendment? We never talk about that one. That the government cannot quarter soldiers in your property. And so, when Joe Biden issued this eviction moratorium, it did cover many veterans and active duty, or I should say active duty soldiers, more importantly, who now could not be evicted from property as a violation of the Third Amendment. It was interesting. I don't know, I don't know where that one went. I mean, the whole thing ended, but... They now want to go after impeaching Joe Biden. I think it's the right move. Here's some more. Here's, here's some more. The National Review says, save our political system, impeach and convict Joe Biden. OK, yeah, they really do want to go after Joe Biden. That's a fact. And um, I think they should. Charles Cook writes, if we keep doing what we're doing, we'll keep getting what we want to avoid getting what we are increasingly likely to get. Congress should impeach and convict President Biden. Evidently, Biden feels as if there are no consequences to violating his oath of office. Last August, Biden double, tripled, quadruple checked whether he was allowed to order another moratorium on evictions without Congress. And he concluded that he was not. He even said this. He said, well, you know, I probably can't do it, but I'll do it now anyway. Then he did it anyway on the outrageous grounds that the time it would take to litigate might allow him to keep this going for a month, at least I hope longer. That right there. He should be impeached. He said he knew it likely wasn't allowed, but he would do it anyway. Last Wednesday, Biden pulled the same trick with student loans. That the president does not have the statutory power to cancel college loans has long been so obvious that even Nancy Pelosi has managed to acknowledge it. The president can't do it. That's not even a discussion, Pelosi said last year. People think the president of the U.S. has the power uh, for debt forgiveness. He does not. A week ago, Biden did it anyway with the help of what might be the single most cynical and embarrassing legal memorandum in modern American history. And why wouldn't he? Given that presidents have started to get away with such behavior as a matter of routine. In 2012, President Obama told audience after audience that he couldn't 
suspend deportations through executive order because there are laws in the books that Congress has passed. Those laws in the books by Congress, Obama said more than 20 times, are very clear in terms of how we have to enforce our immigration system. I'm not I'm not I'm not a king. I'm not the emperor. There is a path to get this done, and that is through Congress. He insisted, and then he did it anyway. And nothing happened. In 2019, Donald Trump followed suit, exasperated by his repeated inability to convince the Democratic Congress to appropriate funds for his border wall. Trump announced that he discovered some emergency laws on the books that conveniently enough allowed him to go it alone. Trump then took $6.5 billion from the Treasury and nothing happened. Complaining about Trump's unilateralism, the Brennan Center noted that Trump's pivot had been executed for the express purpose of subverting the will of Congress and warned the public of the dangers that would be posed by allowing Trump's declaration to stand. The Brennan Center was correct. Only three years later have elapsed since those words were written and inspired by the lack of meaningful accountability that he has now watched two presidents enjoy. Trump's successor just took a set of illegal actions so enormous in scale as to beggar belief. Trump stole six point five billion. Joe Biden has just taken between 100 and 200 times that figure. What sort of danger, I must ask, might be posed by allowing that declaration to stand? Yeah, fair point. We can't function this way. I'd argue stagnation is better than unilateralism, for sure. And this is where we go. This is where we are. Biden's DOJ releases staged photo of Mar-a-Lago documents. We got to get this guy out. Joe Biden needs to be impeached. Take a look at this photo. What's the purpose of it? It's a photo of top secret documents strewn about the floor. Some of them are redacted. Many say top secret. The commander in chief of the armed forces decides what is classified and what isn't. There is no definitive process by which the president has to go through to declassify. If there were, the president would not actually be the commander in chief. The committee in charge of declassification would be because the president would be unable to actually negotiate terms in war, which is insane. So what did they do? They spattered these documents across the floor and took a picture and said, look at these documents. And now people are saying, if Trump really declassified them, where's the proof? Because there doesn't need to be. There does not need to be proof in order for Trump to declassify anything. He can just take out the document and say, these are now declassified. It's really, really dark times for this. Joe Biden should be impeached. I think so. Yes, Joe Biden. I understand Merrick Garland is in charge of the DOJ, but the buck stops with him. We got to do something. Now let's go back in time. April 29th, 2018. Trump says Democrats will try to impeach him if they take control of Congress. He was right. They didn't just try to impeach him. They did. You see, people don't understand that impeachment does not mean conviction. People think impeach means remove from office. It does not. It means indict. And then the Senate moves to convict. But you need 60 plus votes in order to actually convict a sitting president. So not likely going to happen to Donald Trump or Joe Biden. But is this it? Are we doomed to just go down this cycle endlessly until something is done? I think we've got to impeach Joe Biden. It must be done. Jennifer Jacobs on Twitter, verified senior White House reporter for Bloomberg News, tweets, federal prosecutors likely to wait until after November election to announce any action against Trump. If they determine he broke any laws, sources tell C. Strom, this is um, Chris Strom, Bloomberg News, under DOJ policy, no investigative steps 60 days before election this year, that's September 10th. This DOJ decision makes it unlikely anything would be announced on whether any charges will or won't be filed against Trump until after November 8th, sources said. While he isn't on the ballot in November, Trump has endorsed candidates who are, and he leads a fierce political movement. He recently demanded that he be reinstated as president or a new election be held. Trump also might declare he's running for president prior to November. Trump needs to do that now. I know a lot of people are like, but what happens if then the Republicans lose in the midterms? I'm like, yo, look, dude, I got to tell you this. They're going to come after him. Trump's best course of action is to announce he's running for office. It's not a shield. It's not perfect. It's better than nothing. Here's what they're doing. With these documents, they are trying to make it impossible for Trump to run. They're going to claim under some records act that Trump is now ineligible for office. They're already tweeting it. They're saying Trump tried to stage a coup. Trump cut classified documents in violation of the records act. He is now ineligible for public office. It's not true. They can't actually stop him but they're going to do what they can to keep him off the ballot. 
then in many states, they will remove him. While that may not matter in red states, it certainly matters in swing states. If Democrats get control and remove him from a swing state, Trump loses, period. It's over. In which case, Ron DeSantis may be the better bet. Seriously. Now, some people are saying Trump with a VP DeSantis and then DeSantis gets 12 years. But Rick Santorum told us on Timcast IRL, the idea that a Republican would hold the White House or Republicans for 12 years is, is, ho- is wishful thinking. And that's true. I think it's a fair point. So what do you do? The risk is at the last minute they could pull Trump off the ballot. And then what? If there's no DeSantis on the ballot or if DeSantis is under Trump, now you're in trouble. But you know what? I think even if it was DeSantis, they'd pull him from the ballot too. They are going to play every single dirty game possible, every procedural move. Listen, when when playing to win, you use every loophole you got. Sure, you might argue it's dirty, but politics has never been clean. Look, go look, go look at uh, Aaron Burr. Yeah, politics has never been clean. They don't want Trump to run. I think that if it switched to DeSantis, they'd go after him as well. But he's a lot harder to get. So here's where we are. I don't think this will stick unless we get a kangaroo court. Considering the federal government, yeah, we might. What may happen is they won't file an indictment now. They'll wait until after the midterms, indict Trump for this. Then they'll try and get a kangaroo court, a Democrat appointed judge to convict Trump, bang the gavel, and then say you violated this Records Act and now you are ineligible for office. Seems to be where we are headed. Yeah, I can't see the future, my friends. I can't. On Tuesday, the Department of Justice filed its response to the request that a special master be appointed to independently review the documents seized during the raid of, tr- of Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence, saying that classified documents were likely concealed in the estate in violation of a grand jury subpoena. As part of their filing, they released a staged photo of the documents that were seized. I want to explain something to all of you. Staged does not mean manipulated with the intent to, to hoax someone. I was covering a protest in Anaheim. They are protesters, the flag. And a reporter, I think the reporter, I'm not going to say, I don't, I don't know which company the reporter is from, major, major broadcaster, told the guys, get on your knees and hold the flag up. So all the guys came together, struck a pose, he took a picture. That's called staging. It doesn't mean they weren't real protesters. It doesn't mean the flag was given to them. It means they were asked to strike a pose unnatural to what was actually going on. This is a staged photo. They spattered these things in the ground, set them up, put a ruler of some sort around it. I think it's a ruler and then took a picture because these documents were likely in a box. They wanted to show people a bunch of different top secret front pages or whatever you call them. And they wanted to say that Donald Trump had these documents. They wanted to create an idea. That's staging. It's what they did. The NARA referral was made on two bases. Evidence that classified records had been stored at the premises until mid-January 2022, and evidence that certain pages of presidential records had been torn up. The filing stated that personal effects are not subject to return, citing several reasons, including that, that the evidence of, comm- of commingling personal effects with documents bears cl- bearing classification marks is relevant evidence of the statutory offenses under investigation. But hold on. Donald Trump has unilateral declassification powers. He doesn't need to ask anyone. Who would he ask? They don't get it, do they? There is a hierarchy. There is a point at which you are the commander in chief. The president doesn't need to ask permission. If the president is going to negotiate with a dictator, he doesn't say, what am I allowed to say to him? He says, let me handle this. You elected me to be the commander in chief. I'll do my best. And maybe their best isn't good enough. Maybe they're bad at their job. That's fine. But Donald Trump had the ability to declassify any and all of these documents simply by saying so. And he did. Pretty sure he tweeted about it. But it doesn't matter. Regular people don't know. They don't know the difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. They say, yo, you complained about Hillary Clinton, but now you don't care about Trump. Hillary Clinton was not the president. She did not have unilateral declassification authority. Trump does. What do you want me to say about that? That's it. It's not a statement liking Hillary and, and, or, or liking Trump. It's just a fact statement. The president decides. Here we are. It's a coup, huh? A preemptive coup. 
They have done everything in their power to stop Donald Trump. And it's because Donald Trump, I think, wants to eliminate the bureaucratic state. He wants to fire these long standing, standing unelected officials who are working with, within the U.S. government, unaccountable to the American people, unable to be fired. The permanent government, they call it, is a problem. We need to do something about it. Donald Trump is one way to do it. He says he's going to fire everybody. They're talking about 50,000 people getting fired. Realistically, maybe 5,000. But you know what? I'll take it. Something's got to change because this is the corruption. Just recently, a, a, uh, an FBI agent from the Washington field office was escorted out of the building after being forced to resign over political bias. Why? I don't think because of the political bias. I think because they got caught because he had been tweeting about it. I think it, I think it was tweets that he had posted. So they removed him. But what about the rest? The Washington field office raiding the home of Donald Trump. And for what? Notice how they put the Time magazine box next to it. It's just so weird that they did this. Why? Why didn't they take the documents and put them on a bed and line them up so you could clearly see them? It's weird, isn't it? And I have to wonder about the redacted pages. I would assume that these redacted pages are actually just part of one document, but they're trying to make it look like it's a bunch of documents. That's the name of the game, I guess. Secret SCI. Top secret SCI. They want you to think Donald Trump is doing illegal things so that you stay away from him. They truly fear Donald Trump. I'll throw it back to that article they wrote about Tim Pool luring people in with his with his music. That's not political. Oh, no. Some people were like, this is insane. Like you can't even do anything without them claiming it's political. Here's what I said. I said the goal is to build culture because culture has influence. So they're not technically wrong. But the idea that I'm luring people to the right when I'm like a centrist moderate type, well, they're extremists and they're in a cult. Anyone to the right of them is an extremist because they're nuts. That's how they view Trump. Trump is what they fear. But I'll point out when we start building culture and it is apolitical and it does end up becoming a hit. Now they're scared. How did Tim get so many hits on his song? How come he's got so many sales? How come he's number two on iTunes? Uh oh, Mm. we're building culture. And when we do, we are going to use that culture to influence people, not about politics, but about values, personal responsibility and the truth. I don't care if someone's a communist. I care that they know that you're a lying scumbag. I don't care if someone is a socialist or a laissez faire capitalist. I care that they know the truth. So I'm a big fan of Jimmy Dore. Dude knows what he's talking about. Don't agree with his political opinions, but those are opinions. You're allowed to have them. I respect that he speaks the truth. And I respect that he goes after the establishment, the liars, the cheaters, the manipulators. That's what they can't have. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.